சவுத் ஏஷியன் ஃபுட் சீரீஸ்ன்னு சொல்லிட்டு சவுத் ஆப்பிரிக்கன் ஃபுட் பற்றி பேச நீங்கள் லூசா Hi, I'm Divya. Welcome to a new episode of Farm to Thali. Today I'll be chatting with my blogger, teacher, traveler friend Anissa or expat panda about something called a South African bunny and how to cook it. Did you know Durban, South Africa is the largest Indian community outside India? Anissa, how did 1.5 million people of Indian origin end up in South Africa? I know that you and many others are wondering how on earth Indians made it all the way down to the bottom of Africa. Indian people came over to South Africa under British colonialism where they were offered the opportunity to come and work in what was at the time a British colony on the sugarcane plantations on the east coast of South Africa. So many people boarded the ships that left from Chennai and they went off to South Africa hoping for a better life and greater opportunities. Um, unfortunately, when they arrived, they were not given all the benefits that they were promised, which is how things tended to go during colonialism, as we all know. However, um, Indian people decided that they would continue to stay on and make South Africa their home. And so this migration of people from Asia to Africa happened between the 1860s and the early 1900s and um, I guess we've been there ever since. I am fourth generation and uh, there are many people who are fifth generation. What are we cooking today? So the dish that we are making today is called a bunny chow. Please do not get confused with this dish. has no aspects of any rabbits inside it. Um, the dish originated during the time when the indentured laborers came over from India. They wanted to eat curry, but they either didn't have enough access to rice or they couldn't dine in restaurants due to the segregational policies at the time. So they needed to find a way that they could eat their curry on the go, either at work or on the street or wherever they needed to be. And ingeniously, as we know, Indians would make a plan out of nothing. They came up with the idea to use a hollowed out loaf of bread and they put the curry inside, making it accessible and easy for them to eat and also share with others. This hollowed out loaf of bread came to be called a bunny chow. It was called a bunny chow because it was initially made and served by an Indian class of merchants called the Baniyas. At the same time, there were also a lot of Chinese workers in the city and their food was typically referred to as chow. So the two terms came together, baniya chow, and over time, it just became bunny chow. So today, if you go to Durban, South Africa, it's just called a South African bunny. You can put anything curry-wise inside it. The whole premise of the bunny chow is that you're using the bread as a vessel for your curry. So a lot of people would be like, oh, but what's the correct curry to put inside? Or how is the appropriate way to cook the curry? But honestly, because there's such a diversity even within the South African Indian community with people coming from all over India, everyone has come with their own family recipes on how to cook a good curry. So people do things differently, meaning that there's no best or most correct way to cook your curry for your bunny chow. Personally, for me, it just comes down to a very simple raising the onions, adding in the garlic and ginger and whole spices, putting in some tomatoes, letting that simmer, and then adding my vegetables and cooking it for about 40 to 50 minutes. So I just want to emphasize again that there's nothing that is incorrect or inappropriate about whatever you want to put inside it. There you have it. That's a bunny chow. You can make it with whatever ingredients and masalas or spices you have in your kitchen and you cook it until it's done. Super simple. A South African bunny chow is more than a dish. It represents Indian resilience in the face of segregation during apartheid and British colonialism. It's not only tasty, but it represents South African Indian history in a loaf of bread. 
Anissa and I hope you cook it. Anissa and I hope you enjoy the dish. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Ciao.